Welcome to Wildcat Chronicles. We're your hosts, Alyssa Stack and Erica Lesperance, and we created this show to interview students and Wilmington High School staff to gain more information about the senior exploration and the impact this experience has on the students and the Wilmington community. Senior exploration is offered to graduating seniors for about four to five weeks during their last quarter of high school. Students get the option of choosing a project or internship that has to be approved by administration first. These projects or internships have to replace the school day and need to be 30 hours a week depending on if you're taking an AP class or not. Our third episode will be dedicated to our sister principal, Mr. Staffier. Be your second year advising and running Wilmington High School Senior Exploration. How is that like for you? And was there any improvement you made from last year's experience to this year? So it's been fun. Uh, last year being my first year, I really enjoyed jumping into it. Obviously being a teacher um, and a CTL before was a little bit different, but having the uh, ability to kind of control and work closer with the students was very exciting for me. Um, and when I think about the experience last year, was, and I think I said this to your class at the beginning of this year, was it's one of the most exciting things of my year because I think it allows the students to kind of go out and apply what they've learned and kind of explore, that's the name obviously, but possible career opportunities and see if it's something they want to do. Um, and I think this year being the second year, it's kind of allowed me to take what I learned from our experiences last year and kind of fine tune it for your class to go out and do it. Um, and also gave me some other placements for people to give ideas. Sometimes students struggle like, where should I go? Where can I go? Um, and the first year allowed me to make connections with different businesses and teachers and um, just kind of provide you as a class with more opportunities out in the real world. Perfect. Um, what is the criteria of doing either a project or internship and what happens if you take an AP class? So projects and internships fall in the same hour criteria depending on if you're working in an internship or a project you need to dedicate 30 hours a week. Um, the exception is AP courses, so what we've created for students is kind of a mathematical equation of the time you'll be spending in the building uh, preparing and or taking the AP test. You deduct that from your 30 hours per week, depending on the number of classes too. And what hope do you have for students who partake in an internship? So hopefully when you have an internship, I mean, ideally, it, you find that what you thought you may want to pursue as a career uh, or go to college for um, is something that you're reassuring by taking part in this internship. Um, but the other part of it I also look at as an opportunity, if it's not sure that you want to go down a certain pathway, and by taking this internship on, you realize, I, I don't want to do this, and I don't want to pursue it in college, I always tell students, You've saved some time and money that you thought uh, that going to college, preparing for this, for a final career that you now know you don't want to do. Um, and it, it's a very difficult time in your life to make that big commitment. And I, that's what I love about the internship. It's, it's reality. It's what goes on in the workplace. Uh, something I never had as an opportunity as a student when I was younger. And I think it's just a great way to explore what's out there and kind of what it appears to be versus what it really is. Um, do you believe as our assistant principal you're making an impact on our lives by offering this experience? I would say yes, and I don't <laughs> I don't like to take credit as I am making an impact. I think the program itself is making an impact. I really think, again, it is, we're very unique that Wilmington High School offers this. I think more schools are kind of getting on board with it, but I think Wilmington uh, is in a place, and again, we're fine-tuning this, which means we're getting better with it every year. Um, but it is a unique opportunity. I'm proud to be part of it. And like I said at the beginning, I, I really enjoy being kind of the, the role point person in this. Um, but it is something I hope that continues to grow. And obviously, as we go on, the students get more and more from it as part of their high school career. And what's the approval process like for you? How do you determine if a project or internship gets approved or not? So that is also like an exciting part of the process that I think sometimes gets overlooked. Um, it provides me to have conversations with students, whether it's in person or through email as to like what their proposal is, how they plan to navigate it. Um, part of it is looking at the hours. Are you proposing something that's going to be enough to get 30 hours a week? Uh, and sometimes students kind of have taken on more than the 30 hours and not realizing what they're getting into. 
Um, so I think that is a very important part of it. And I think it's more of the personal connection that I've been able to make with students one-on-one or if, it, if they're working in groups and kind of meeting up with them um, and watching students fine tune and kind of change directions throughout their process is, is an exciting part of it as well. And what is your favorite part of the senior exploration? I would say the expo and the presentations um, because it is showing everyone and I love what, having you know other students in there and faculty kind of it's your moment to shine it's this is what we were able to do over four or five weeks this is what we created as much as I know the hard part of uh, going through it the kind of the stumbles or the hiccups you may have experienced and how you work through those are, are all brought out in presentations and in the expo but I, I like the closure part of it and kind of the learning process that you share with us as a school. And did you have this type of experience when you were in high school? We did not. Um, unfortunately, we had nothing like this that existed. And um, I may have may not have shared this with your class, but I left Wilmington High School a few years ago, like a lot of years ago. Um, and I thought I was going to be a physical therapist, and I went to Northeastern for physical therapy for two years. Uh, and in hindsight, I wish I had that opportunity to kind of go out and do some physical therapy and realize that wasn't something I really wanted to do. Um, so that's how I, I look at it in my experience. Right. Since you've been a teacher for many years before becoming an assistant principal, has there been any projects or internships that really stood out to you? And who was the student, if you remember, and what did they do? I can't say that certain ones st like stand out specifically. Um, I do oftentimes go back to ideas that students have had um, and the, how they've carried out uh, different projects and internships. The other thing I think is great to hear is like again being as a teacher you were able to kind of visit the expo or visit the project presentations um, but now as an assistant principal I get to hear directly from companies calling me saying so and so did an excellent job. I'm looking excited. I'm really excited for next year to take more students from your school. Uh, all of that feedback, I think, is something new that I've got, had in this role that I didn't have as a teacher prior. And what advice would you give a senior about the exploration experience? So again, I would look at this as making the most of it. You're on your own, you're very independent at this point in time, and I would try to get as much as you can, depending on what you're doing, your internship, your project, uh, push the limits of what you can do, what they'll allow you to do, uh, get the most of it to make it as real as possible, um, and take chances. I think taking chances is something important as this process, because it's as I said before, I never had this opportunity, but the chance to go in to try a possible career, um, maybe you're ruling out that career, maybe you're falling in love with a career that you now were excited about, but now you're really driven to do well and, and uh, follow and pursue in college. Perfect. And what do you think the benefits of partaking in a senior exploration instead of a regular classroom setting is for students in their last quarter, senior year? So I think that's, again, as I said at the very beginning of the show, I think it's a hands-on. We've taken what we've kind of explored through our coursework here at the high school, uh, primarily probably electives, I would guess, is some of the places where you've been introduced to some of these things, uh, and then applying them. Um, and classroom work is a lot different than real work. It prepares you, but nothing is going to prepare you for the job than the job itself. Um, and as adults, we learn. As we continue to grow and navigate in a career, we continue to learn how things go, different situations, and how we're going to succeed in them. And in your own words, can you explain what the senior exploration is and what it means to you? In my own words, I, I would say it's a, a great opportunity. I tell people all the time outside of here um, that it is something that it, I guess it's a great learning curve. Um, and it's a great time in your life that hopefully you'll look back to and say, this is something I got to do, and this is how I got here. Whether it was, as I told you, with me with physical therapy or somebody that kind of took the opportunity and said, this is where my career is. I mean, if you're going to take on this career for the rest of your life, people are going to say, how long were you in biotech? Well, I started. I was actually still in my senior year, and I got an opportunity to work at a biotech firm or whatever it is. Um, so I think it's a, a great uh, point, starting point for your career as well. Perfect. So to move on from senior exploration questions, we're just going to ask a couple of, like fun questions just yeah. about you. Yeah. Um, what do you think you'll miss the most about our senior class? 
Oh, boy, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, your senior class has just been an exciting senior class to be around. Um, and I think that your, your class as a whole has a lot to offer the world, uh, the diversity within your class, um, the ability to communicate with you, I think, has been very unique. And it may be my second year as assistant principal and uh, my own comfort, but I feel like the personal relationships and the questions that uh, I've, I've received from you and the communication has been really great. Um, and I think that your senior class has kind of just been a fun class to, to have in the building. And I, I truly believe we're going to miss having you in the building. We've missed you already these past couple weeks. Um, but it's great seeing you at prom and the way you guys represent yourselves has been excellent. Um, and when you were in high school, you went to Wilmington. Mm -hmm. What kind of like groups and activities were you involved in, and what do you miss the most? <laughs> um, so when I went to high school in Wilmington, I was involved with basketball. I played volleyball, which was not at the high school, but I played outside of there. Um, we did not have mock trial, which is something I t was a, an advisor for for many years. I uh, wish we had that. Again, I would put that in the same bucket as like senior exploration. Um, so those are the types of things that I was involved with when I was a student. Great. Um, where did you attend college and what was the college process like for you? Um, so as I said at the beginning, or I was at Northeastern for two years um, pursuing physical therapy. Uh, at that point in time, I decided it wasn't for me and I ended up leaving uh, Northeastern bec to become a teacher. Uh, I left Wilmington High School and was coaching an assistant coaching, um, and I always liked working with students, so I knew that was my next career move. Uh, and at that point in time, I had switched over to Salem State, which I ended up getting my undergraduate and graduate degree from there. Perfect. And before you became one of the assistant principals, you were the head of the history department. Did you always know you wanted to be a history teacher? And if not, what did you want to be? So again, I started off with physical therapy, and then again, I went to history. Um, I enjoyed teaching history, and it's been kind of a, it's a unique path. Um, teaching history, I started at a middle school grade at Stoneham, and then I moved to the high school where I've been here for 24 years now. Um, but it is interesting, like, the more you've been in the classroom, as I, I guess, travel through my career when I became CTL, I only had three classes, uh, and then as assistant principal, don't have any classes. So I do miss the interaction with my students in my classroom. Uh, it's a very unique personal connection, um, and as an assistant principal, you get to kind of know students, more students, but in different ways. Perfect. Lastly, is there any advice you want to give the seniors before they enter their next chapter of life? Um, I would say do the best that you can and do something you love to do. Um, it's hard not doing something, or I should say it's hard to do something well if you don't truly love it. And I think I think I've learned that through my own personal life um, again. And once you find something work related that you like to do, it isn't really work uh, and it makes it easier on you. Thank you so much for being part of our show and sharing more about the senior exploration. Welcome back to Wildcat Chronicles. For this part of the episode, we'll be interviewing our principal, Mr. Gendron. Mr. Gendron, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Thanks for having me. My name is Ryan Gendron, I'm the principal at Wilmington High School. This is year two for me at Wilmington High School, uh, and I love it so much. Awesome students, uh, great faculty, supportive community. Uh, it really is a great place to teach and to learn. Perfect. And before you became the principal at Wilmington High School, you were a teacher at a different school. What did you teach and where? Uh, so I taught in a couple places. My first teaching job was at the high school I went to, Tingsboro High School. Uh, which was really fun and odd, you know, like Mr. Carey was now a colleague. He'd say, call me Ed now, <laughs> which was odd. Um, and then uh, I spent some time in Virginia, just outside D.C. in Arlington, and I taught and coached down there. Uh, and then when I came back um, to Massachusetts, I taught for three more years at Lexington High School. Uh -huh. uh, and across all the way, teaching mostly um, history classes, social studies and psychology classes, um, and coaching uh, as well. Perfect. Um, how did you know you wanted to become a principal after years of being a teacher, and what made you make the change? So uh, I didn't know that at first. First, I knew I wanted to be a teacher and a coach, uh, and that was fueled primarily by some great teachers and coaches that I had growing up. 
um, teachers and coaches who like pushed me to like maximize my potential or have confidence when I was a little shaky. Um, and so then to be on the other side as a teacher and a coach and have that relationship uh, with students was like so fulfilling, so rewarding and so much fun. Um, and I think after about 10 years of teaching, uh, I started to think about like every year I have about 100 students who are my direct responsibility uh, and kind of feeling, um, you know, interest in impacting a wider range of students and more students uh, and more impact on staff and the teaching that's happening in the school. Um, and so I started to talk to some principals and assistant principals and superintendents and other administrators. And when they talked about their role, uh, it sounded like exactly what I was looking for. And so I did uh, an additional master's program and an administrator internship program um, and got an assistant principal position uh, at Waltham High School. Uh, and as you know, that uh, led into this position, uh, which is my favorite one yet. And... What was the experience like transitioning from a teacher to a principal all while moving to a new school? It's a lot, um, and we might need uh, an hour to discuss that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's there's a lot of similarities, you know, uh, in the classroom or, you know, trying to administrate a school. you got to be really clear with expectations and make sure, you know, everyone understands what's being asked of them so that they can then reach those expectations uh, you got to be transparent and honest with people, um, which includes both celebrating the good times and also, you know, giving uh, constructive feedback when there's room to grow. Uh, and I see parallels both in the classroom and, you know, uh, managing a building. Um, I think at the end of the day, all the positions are about relationships and people. Um, and you got to make people feel special to see them grow. Um, and I see teachers do that. I see principals do that. Uh, I see students do that with them with each other. So um, I think at the end of the day, there's a lot of parallels, but um, the larger number of people to manage is probably the biggest difference uh, of being the principal. Perfect. Um, at your last schools, did they offer for the seniors a senior exploration? So most of the other schools that I've been at do offer uh, a senior exploration. Um, with the exception of Tingsboro at the beginning, all the other schools that um, I worked at were – uh, significantly larger uh, than Wilmington High School. Um, most of them had between 2,000 to 3,000 uh, in Virginia, 4,000 students, which is like really big. Um, some like small colleges in this area that size. Um, and so in those schools, the senior exploration equivalents um, were not always the entire grade. They were like smaller pockets um, of individual students uh, the pressure was really on them to kind of present and craft an experience. Um, and because that was so difficult and unstructured, not that many students participated, uh, but most uh, every school I've been at uh, has a pathway for that. Perfect. And what would you say is your favorite part about the senior exploration? There's a lot of good parts. I think my favorite part is um, it offers you know me uh, and other staff members an insight into what the students really care about. Um, so when we see you at school, we see such like a limited snapshot of you. It's like you in a controlled environment, following your schedule, doing academic things. But senior exploration takes away some of those like structures and requirements and asks you how you want to spend your time in a meaningful way. And so I'm always fascinated by the projects and internships and topics that students decide to tackle in senior exploration, because most times they're passions that you have that I had no idea about. Uh, and so I think that's really my favorite part about senior exploration. Perfect. And what are you hoping that seniors are getting out of partaking in the senior exploration? So I hope that seniors are feeling like this step into the real world. Like I just said, um, your time at Wilmington High School is very structured to the point where we ring a bell to say when it's time to go to the next class, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so timeliness is important. But really, as you get into the real world, a lot of it is much less scripted, much more unpredictable. And so navigating that world is your next job. Uh, and whether it's in a workplace or in a college setting uh, or somewhere in between, um, you're going to have to figure out what motivates you, what you're passionate about, how to enter those uh, fields or areas of um, expertise and like distinguish yourself. 
Uh, and so if we had a couple more weeks of sitting in classes at WHS, I don't think we're supporting you in that transition in the same way that senior exploration does. Right. Um, and have there been any projects that have stood out to you? And if you can remember, what did the student do? So um, the very first time I set foot in Wilmington High School, um, I saw the beautiful courtyard and a nice pergola in the middle. Uh, and that was actually the first uh, time I heard about senior exploration when one of the people taking me on the tour said, look, that is built by a student. I said, what? How could a student build that? Uh, and that was kind of my first introduction. And so I think fast forward to, to today, I brought some examples, um, you know, not to leave anyone out, but just to give, you know, like a feel for how wide uh, these interests are. For projects, we have a student writing a novel. We have a pair of students recording in a studio album for their music. Uh, some students are designing a clothing line. Another group's creating a vision of the graduate video game, which I can't way to play. Uh, there are multiple murals going up um, in Wilmington High School and across the district. Uh, and there's like a WHS athletics documentary being filmed. And this is just a quick list of a, a few examples. For internships, we have people at WCTV. Um, we have students working at the different uh, elementary, intermediate, and middle schools in the district. Uh, we have students uh, interning in the trades. Um, some are working in real estate. Um, one is shadowing a staging company that comes in and does, um, you know, the furniture for an open house. We have people in nursing roles, physical therapy roles, small businesses, and even big businesses. Uh, we have students traveling uh, with Comcast Sports um, and getting a look at what's happening behind the scenes. So uh, I don't have a favorite per se, but I, I'm just so impressed by how wide uh, those experiences are. And when you first entered Wilmington High School last year as our new principal and knowing all the rules and stuff that we had before, were there any ideas or rules that you wanted to change to better accommodate the students? Um, I think uh, there were some changes that we made in uh, an effort to be, I think, less like uh, rule based uh, and more supportive. Um, so I think. I see like the school a school administration's role as keeping the school safe, calm, predictable, but supporting growth whenever possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the hat policy was something that uh, we came in and we looked at because in the very beginning of my time here, I was shocked to see how many uh, arguments between students and staff there were about hats. Um, and there would be a conflict about a hat and the student would take it off and then go around the corner and put it back on and – you know, like all over hats. Uh, and, and so we ran a pilot to take away some of the emphasis on uh, arguing over hats. Uh, there were sometimes in the hallway and in the cafeteria, students would wear a hat. Um, and without, you know, that um, negative interaction around it, it was like a small step in the direction of just a more um, welcoming environment. Uh, we didn't see any increase in disruptions in the classroom or outside the classroom. Uh, if anything, students, I think, appreciated being um, able to explain why their hat helped them uh, on a bad hair day or as part of their, like, expression of, like, their outfit. Uh, and really, in no cases did a hat interfere with our ability to, like, teach students or keep people safe. And so that's like maybe one example of a rule that existed, but one that we rethought to see if we could maybe um, move things in uh, a more welcoming direction. That's great. Um, and when you were in high school, did you have the opportunity to do a senior exploration or anything like it? No, uh, I didn't. Uh, a long, long time ago when I was a high school student, um, I think things ran more traditionally uh, at my school, Tingsboro High School. Um, I think uh, Wilmington was very early in adopting a program like senior exploration. In fact, uh, most high schools are trying to transition towards a program like this uh, because the outcomes are so positive, um, especially in contrast to what would be happening instead, you know, just kind of continuing in the classes that you're in all year. Um, but no, I, I didn't have that opportunity. Um, but it's fun to think about what I would do if I did. <laughs> What are some things you would have done if you had one? 
Well, uh, you know, like we have a large number of students who work in schools, uh, so that might be something uh, that I would have uh, tackled. But in high school, I wasn't necessarily ready for education. Um, actually, when I first went to college, I went as pre-med. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, and so in this way, senior exploration would have been really helpful because it was my freshman year of college when I was taking the pre-med requisites, you know, like the bio classes, the chemistry classes, orgo, and I hated them all. No offense to the science <laughs> teachers or the doctors. I just had no interest in that. Like I really had more interest in fun and like working with people, learning how the brain works, learning about um, learning about learning. Um, but I had never had an opportunity to like try on the career or the major of pre-med. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe in a senior exploration, a student tries an area of study and realizes they really love it. This is what I want to do. And that's great. Sometimes it's the opposite. They try a career path or an occupation that their whole life they thought they wanted to do and they hate it. Um, and it can make for, you know, a long four weeks, but that's really beneficial and valuable, uh, you know, in, in the long term to figure those things out now with like a really strong safety net and support system um, so that you make some changes before, um, you know, you've sunk a lot of time, energy and money uh, into a possible career path. Right. And when you are like going through the process of determining if a project or internship is getting approved or not, are you working with Mr. Staffier to approve the students and what determines if they get approved or not? Yeah, so Mr. Staffier, Mr. Miranda and I work together um, going through those proposals as they come in. Um, pretty much uh, every opportunity we have to say yes, we say yes. Um, really the only feedback and back and forth when it comes to proposals is um, trying to help um, with a ballpark feel for like how much work is this going to be i would say more often than not students are so ambitious with their senior exploration project that we have to almost like rail rein them in a little bit um and you know um a senior exploration project doesn't need to you know cure cancer or create like new laws of thermodynamics uh, and so sometimes like the pressure students put on themselves to create the most powerful impactful project ever like it's our job to almost like reassure them that it's you know the end of senior year and we want you to do something meaningful that you're passionate about but we don't want you to stretch yourself too thin uh, we also work with students on the other end of if it looks like um, they might finish um, the proposal early or they might need opportunities on how to extend the project we might um, revisit it with them and have you know a meeting or we comment on the docs that you propose um, your project in. Um, so I'd say those are like the two main ways that we offer feedback uh, on the projects. And then the third is almost after the approval process, once things get rolling, there are unexpected bumps along the way or uh, projects or internships turn and, um, and we're available to help students as they navigate that as well. Great. Um, and we already touched on this a little, but what is your take on the senior exploration? And do you think it's beneficial beneficial for students transitioning into their next chapter of life? Yeah, I do. Um, I've seen one full cycle. Um, and uh, at this point in the process last year, I think I had a lot of questions um, because we miss you a lot. You know, we see you every day and then we don't. Uh, and while we don't see you, you're off on lots of different projects, lots of different internships, not under our direct supervision. Uh, and so at this point last year, I had some questions of like, is this, um, is what's supposed to be happening out there happening out there? Um, my mind changed when it came time for the project presentations and the internship expo. Uh, and I was blown away at how well prepared the students were, how passionate the students were, how much most of them like exceeded the minimum requirements of the project because they got so invested. Um, and, and I really haven't seen anything that powerful like in education in my life. Uh, you know, we in the school, there are some great projects, some great units, some great lessons and activities. But like for a high school student to put four or five weeks of work into something and then present it in the context of the vision of the graduate, like that's what we're going for. Um, and I don't know that it can be done without 
giving you the time and structure to pursue those passions in this way. Right. So as you're entering into your second year working with the senior exploration, um, is there anything that you would like to change in the years come or do you think what we have right now is good? Yeah, I think I would like to add more frequent support from school staff. Um, so whether a project or an internship, you have like a designated advisor or supervisor, but that person is not always a WH staff member. So whether we use like the advisory setting and your advisor has like a check-in role with you uh, or we do peer check-ins and like more frequent ways to like problem solve issues you're running into, I think there's a way for us to increase the communication happening with each other and with um, staff members. Uh, a little bit more than there is right now. We have the time logs. We have the check-in vision of the graduate um, assignment. Uh, but I think we can do a little bit more just to add to the supports. Um, and supports are great because if you don't need them, you know, you don't have to access them um, just out of obligation. But we want to make sure that everyone has um, other people to bounce ideas off of. Um, and I think that's one place we might be a little bit thin. Perfect. And if a student asked you for advice about the senior exploration, what would you say? I would say, um, you know, worry first about what you're passionate about. Um, you know, the hours, we can figure that out. Where you are doing the work, we can figure that out. All the logistical details, we can figure out. Um, but picking something that you're passionate about is, I think, the, the most important thing, not only for senior exploration, but also the next series of decisions you're making in your life. Um, you know, in high school, I feel like students get one of two pressures, either the pressure to decide in eighth grade, potentially what you want to do for the rest of your life or pressure like to move that decision down the road. Like you're still young. You don't have to decide. And then in 10th grade, you still got time. You don't have to decide 12th grade. You know, you got time. You don't have to decide. And those two pressures are so far away and reality is somewhere in between. Um, but I think when you've take the pressure off of careers and logistics and think about what you love to do. If you can start moving closer to that in senior exploration or next year, everything else will start to sort itself out. The jobs, the occupations, the training, the schooling, like it all will figure itself out if you find things that you really care about. Perfect. And can you in your own words explain the senior exploration and how you view this experience for seniors? Yeah, so senior exploration is the fourth quarter at Wilmington High School where students have an opportunity to take a break from their structured classes and take a step into the real world in the form of an internship or an applied project. To do it well, you need to take the skills that you've learned in Wilmington Public Schools from really K to 12. Um, you got to take the five mindsets of the vision of the graduate, and then you need to apply them to something that matters to you. Um, and for some students, it's going to lead to a series of similar decisions uh, about their future. And for some, it'll be uh, an opportunity to test something out, <laughs> say thanks but no thanks, and uh, have a new opportunity um, to pursue passion. So um, that's how I put vision, uh, senior exploration in a nutshell. And to move on from the senior exploration questions, well, we, we have a couple of fun questions for you. Ooh. <laughs> um, the first one is, what do you think you'll miss the most about our graduating class? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, well, last year, uh, the seniors were great. Uh, and I felt bad because I had, like, it felt for me, like, 50% time to, like, really get to know them. Because 50% of the time, I was also learning how to be a principal in my first year. Uh, with you all, it's been really fun because this year, like, some of the principaling is down and there was more opportunity uh, to get to know people. Um, and so, you know, for you two individually, but also the whole class, I feel like, um, you know, you got to know me, I got to know you. And so the relationships um, were a little bit stronger. Um, and that's what I think I'll always remember about the class of 2024. <laughs> Perfect. And when you were in high school, what activities or groups were you part of and which one do you miss the most? Mm, OK, so um, I was into athletics. So I had uh, I did football and hockey and baseball um, in like extracurriculars and things like that. Uh, I wrote for the student newspaper. It's called The Bridge um, in Tingsboro. There's a big bridge in the middle for kind of two sides of town. 
Um, and I really like that. Um, and I would say that's probably one that like uh, I kind of get away from um, writing in like a non-school related way, um, but it was really fun. Um, you got to discover a lot of interesting stories and learn uh, about people and places and things. So um, I would say that's one that I miss. Shout out to Mr. Varnum, the uh, advisor for the bridge. <laughs> um, and. Did you attend college and what did you major in and what was the college process or sorry, where did you attend college and what was the college process like for you? Uh, yep. So I went to Tufts, Uni- Tufts University for undergrad. Um, I started there, like I said, on a pre-med track, um, but then I switched. Uh, I switched to major in psychology with a minor in human development, child development. Um, about halfway through is when I started to realize that like, I really wanted to be working uh, in an education setting. Um, And uh, the Tufts career services were great. I was playing football and baseball at Tufts too. So those coaches were like really influential and helpful. And so I ended up doing um, Tufts has a master's in teaching program that I rolled right into. So it started three days after graduation. I went right into that program. But the beauty of it is they put you in a school in a like student teaching internship, um, and it's a one calendar year program. So it's accelerated. You go to class over the summer, uh, but you have your master's to teach in like essentially a year. Um, so I went in all in at that point um, and uh, was ready to teach the following year. Um, and just one quick story because um, I think promoting careers in education is so important. Uh, and I'm thrilled that we have 14 seniors pursuing careers in education. Um, but when I first made that switch uh, from pre-med to education, I was a little bit like shy about telling people because they had one thing in their mind and now I was pursuing something else. Uh, and we were at a spinners game uh, back when they were at Lalasha Park and I was talking to a family friend uh, and I was a little wishy-washy. I said, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to try teaching and maybe I'll do some coaching. I'm not really sure. And my mom, who was a teacher uh, and actually a principal of an elementary school in law, she heard me and she got mad. Uh, and she said, Ryan, like, totally support you. But if you're going to be a teacher and you're going to go into education, don't be wishy-washy about it. Be proud of it and tell people that you're going to be the best teacher, the best coach you can be. And so that, like, sticks with me still. Uh, and I, th- I think every day when I show up, like, I'm trying to model that and be the best teacher, best educator, best coach that I can be. Not only for the students, but also the staff at Wilmington High School. That's great. Um, oh, sorry. Um, is there any advice, general advice you want to give the seniors before they enter their next chapter of life? Yeah, I think the best advice, it's not unique from me, is that be okay with making mistakes. You know, like a, t- making a mistake means you took a shot, you took a risk, you stretched yourself, you challenged yourself. Every time that happens, it's not going to work out, Uh, but that's okay. And I think when people try to forge a path where they never make a mistake or never have like a difficult moment, you end up taking such a safe route that like a lot of opportunities that you might encounter don't happen. Um, And so that would be my best advice. Uh, um, And I think the fact that you hear that from a lot of people, you know, they can't all be wrong, um, but it's easier said than done. And, you know, the disappointment of not getting something you tried hard for or, you know, the feeling of loss or rejection, like those are powerful emotions. It makes sense people want to avoid them. But if you can, like, take the pressure off of that, it's just such an important part of the growth process and learning process. Uh, And sometimes those shots go in, right? And you make some really powerful uh, jumps or connections. Um, So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Perfect. Thank you so much for being a part of our show and sharing your experience with us. We are Eric Les Bruns <laughs> and Alyssa Stack, and we'll see you for our next episode of Wildcat Chronicles. Thank you. Roll cats. <laughs>